Okay, so we left off talking about contrast agents and the following criteria, um, and we went through that already. Um, if, you, if you missed anything, just review part one, um, and we'll continue on here with part two. So, contrast harmonics. These are basically what the, 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 the terminology says. Uh, an, uh, as an ultrasound pulse reacts with microbubbles, or that outside agent, a small amount of energy is converted from the fundamental frequency to the harmonic frequency. So, if we said that 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 harmonics comes from, or harmonic images are made from twice the fundamental frequency, this is kind of where we start to explain what happens, how it happens. Well, we're going to talk first about contrast. These contrast agents are creating that extra frequency and it doubles on the way back. So we send our, our 2 megahertz, for example, sound wave out. We hit the, car, the micro bubbles or the contrast agent. They react, boom, we get 4 on the way back. So it's very simple. This is, this is no different from sending a sound pulse out it hits the it travels through the soft tissue and reflects back now we're just adding an extra little uh, little step in there that when we use contrast harmonics or we inject or have these people ingest these micro bubbles sound sound pulse travels out it reacts with these bubbles and the bubbles create extra energy and it goes from fundamental to the harmonic and it for example if we had two comes back at four very simple don't overthink it. Don't don't overdo it. Just accept it. Uh, contrast harmonics are created during reflection, and we'll talk about Figure 17:4 in the book. Uh, it shows a transducer sends a sound pulse out, hits the micro bubbles, and you have the little bitty frequency along for the ride, and it comes back doubled. Uh, the result of non-linear behavior of microbubbles when sound strikes them. Again, contrast harmonics are the result of non-linear behavior. There's that non-linear behavior with harmonics again. Uh, the non-linear behavior of microbubbles when sound strikes them. So right now you ought to be thinking, okay, well, sound strikes the bubbles, what happens? Um, well, we know non-linear behavior happens, so let's put that in our pocket and we're going to use it here in a little bit. So what nonlinear behavior of a microbubble creates contrast harmonics? Well, I just told you to put it in your pocket, take it out because we're going to talk about it. Uh, a sound wave is an oscillation of pressure. We learned this early, early on in, in this physics uh, semester. Um, and remember, an oscillation is just kind of a, a, a movement or a, uh, you know, when something oscillates, I'm going to use my hand right here, it's, it kind of like does like that or it might shake an oscillation like that. An oscillating fan goes, goes back and forth, back and forth. That's an oscillating fan, that motion or movement. Um, when a microbubble is within a sound beam, the bubble grows and shrinks in relation to the pressure. <clears throat> so it's going to, if this is my bubble, if you will, it's going to grow and shrink. Grow and shrink. Okay, This is the natural size. This is the shrink. This is the grow. Um, contrast harmonics are created because uneven changes in the size of the bubble or because of uneven changes in the size of the bubble when exposed to a sound beam of adequate strength. This uneven behavior is called resonance. Um, everybody knows, should know what resonance is. Um, it's, it's, it could be uh, an echo. It could be when, when Lacey sings, the, the, her voice carries. Uh, when I tune a drum, I have a, 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 a head, uh, the, the top head that I hit, the bottom head that resonates or creates the sound or, 
or that you know that that uh, when when I sing and Lacey sing, you would probably if you listen real closer, you'd hear that one 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 one. It's that uneven tune, if you will, um, because I am such a fantastic singer, and Lacey's pretty good, but we just don't get in tune together, if you will. Just kidding. Uh, exposure to high pressure component of a sound wave, um, the bubble shrinks, and the pressure inside the bubble increases. So when it's in the high part the high pressure part of that sound wave the bubble is going to shrink the pressure inside the bubble is going to increase okay so it shrinks because of the pressure on the outside all right but that pressure inside is building up it's it's trying to stop the shrink if you will the bubble resists further compression thereby limiting how small the bubble will become so eventually it stops it and says, whoa, you can't go any further. So that pressure is pushing out. The pressure on the outside is pushing down to compress it. And the pressure on the inside is trying to stop the compression. So that's what limits how small the bubble will, come, will become. Uh, when it's exposed to lo the low pressure component of a sound wave, the bubble is allowed to expand. Okay, it's a that that pressure on the inside goes. All right, whew, I can kind of, I got a little room here, um, and the pressure on the outside is is not pushing, not high enough to push down on it. The bub that makes sense. The bubble expands. Bubbles expand to a greater extent than they shrink. So the pressure on the outside, on the inside, is allowed to uh, push the bubble out and expand it and let it grow. There's less resistance, if you will. All this is talking about is not to confuse you. It's just to tell you, you know, uh, that how the bubbles react to high and low pressures of the the sound beam uh, when they travel through it, and it should make sense. It's it's not it's not anything, you know, very scientific. It's just think about it, you know. It's no different from from me, you know, going up into the mountains. Well, no, that's not a good example. Scratch that. I'm not even going to say that because I'm just going to confuse you because you're going to think, no, the atmosphere is less. And no, forget it. High pressure, the bubble shrinks. Low pressures, the bubble expands. Simple as that. Done. Moving on. Uh, as the bubble changes shape unevenly, shrinks, grows, shrinks, grows, a small amount of energy is transferred from the fundamental frequency to the harmonic frequency. Contrast harmonics are created during reflection of the sound energy. Uh, we talked about, uh, okay, for example, if we rub our hands together, just do we create energy or do we change energy? We create that heat, right? Or we transfer one energy into heat. If I, if I shrink a bubble can, or grow, shrink, grow, shrink, grow, shrink, grow, shrink like that, I am heating up. It's no different from tissue. Uh, those bubbles are, are giving off that extra energy from the fundamental frequency and transferring it to the harmonic frequency. The one thing that we talked about that makes, supposedly makes ultrasound harmful, even though we know it's not, I, we talked about and we'll talk further, I know I've mentioned, as sound travels through the body, it's oscillating or vibrating those tissues. And those